so I'm going to talk about uh, this work that I am doing here in Nottingham. However, your yeah. sound is not very good. Oh, oh. Okay, it, it, it will improve. Okay, you can keep talking. Thanks. Oh, okay. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, this work that I am uh, doing here in Nottingham, in UK, in collaboration with uh, Sebastian Nosa, Federico Stasicin, Enrique Kuchner, and uh, Fraser Pierce, among other people. Um, yeah, here I am working with data from the, the 300 project, which is a set of 324 simulations of galaxy clusters from the multi dark simulation. Uh, these are yeah, resimulations, um, spherical resimulations with full physics and um, everything. We identify the filaments with the, these pairs, um, and this software uh, analyzes and identifies the nodes, saddle points, exit points, bifurcation. Here I have a cluster uh, as an example. Uh, you see that the filament structure has a radial pattern. This is uh, mostly, um, this is the case for the majority of the, of the sample. Um, as with the previous work, we are going to discard everything that is inside two times R200 from the halos, from dark matter halos. So here I have a, like, a diagram of a filament. And at the end and the start, uh, there are going to be uh, halos in general, big halos. And we remove everything, but there are other things around the filaments, like groups or smaller halos, and we remove everything that is inside two times R200 from these halos. We consider only the material, the diffuse material uh, around the filaments. Here you can see an example of what uh, it looks like when you remove uh, the halos. If you don't remove anything, you have many clamps. Uh, and if you remove two little, like one time R200, you're, you're going to have like a shell. And if you remove everything, uh, it looks better. You can see better than filament. And um, yes, um, so in the previous work, um, we studied among other things, um, the differences between the dark matter and gas, how they behave uh, in the filaments around these clusters. Um, here I have a plot of the distribution of the radial component of the velocity uh, for different distances from the center of the cluster, uh, separating the particles uh, in the filaments and outside the filaments. So for the dark matter, it, a particle doesn't care really much if uh, it is inside a filament or outside a filament. It is going to fall towards the center in the same way. But for gas, this is uh, like really different. If you are inside a filament, for example, in this plot, uh, the the yeah the radial component is going to be really negative if you are inside a filament. But if you are outside a filament, there's a large proportion of particles that are uh, having a positive uh, velocity, so they are escaping. So yeah, basically, the flow of particles is much more efficient inside the filament. Um, so here I have uh, two plots of a slice of, this is a cluster number seven, and this is the cluster number uh, 47 or something. And you see the different counterparts. Um, you see here the density, the gas density. Here is the Mach number um, of this gas. The Mach number yeah, tells you how short uh, particles are. Um, we have the temperature here and the radial component of the velocity. So uh, the, the network is marked with these purple points. So uh, you see that in the filaments, obviously, the density is higher. But another thing that is not very obvious is that uh, yeah, close to the filaments, the Mach numbers are kind of low. Um, and yeah, close to the to the center of the cluster, the numbers are low as well. So at a certain distance from the filament and from the cluster, you start to see these regions of, sh of shot gas. And if you look at the temperature, yeah, close to the center, obviously the temperature is higher, and also um, close to the filaments. And, and this is in general the case for most of the clusters. Here you see that 
the same thing that I explained before, that along the filaments, the, the, the velocities are very uh, negative. Um, then there are these clouds or this region of material that have um, or particles that have positive velocities. So, um, and in the border of these regions, you can see that there is some short material. Some, yeah. Uh, so yeah, this is the case for most of the, cl the clusters. So what I do is a statistical analysis, and um, this is these are the quantities that I use. Um, I'm going to focus on this uh, diagram. Uh, this is the given a particle. Uh, you find what is the um, the distance from the particle to the center, and that is going that, that is going to be the D class parameter. And then you have the distance from the a filament to the closest filament to the particle along this arc. Um, so this is going to be the arc. And um, yeah, this is the angle of the uh, of, of this uh, position of this. Uh, for, for every particle you do this, so you find the closest filament and you determine these quantities. Basically, what I say is that the parameter that um, tells you how uh, how much influence uh, you get from the filament is uh, the arc because all the particles that have the same D class are going to be affected in the same way by the cluster. This is a, an assumption that we make. Um, but yeah, so if we start the data, uh, here I have the density. This is the angle for, from the filament. At zero, you're going to find um, the filament, obviously, and the, the density is going to increase close to the, um, the filament. And yeah, he, here this part was removed, of course, because we remove everything that is um, inside to time hard at 100. Um, and yeah, and the contour plots uh, determine, uh, indicate the um, amount of particles that per beam. So uh, basically this tells you uh, what regions are not reliable because of the low number count uh, of particles. Uh, on the left, you have all the particles, and on the right, you have only the short particles. So here we see that the particles that are close to 90 degrees are kind of uh, uh, not very reliable. But yeah, and these lines are the unique uh, one-dimensional profiles for different uh, distances from the cluster. So from two uh, R200 to three R200, this is normalized, by the way, by R200. It, this is a D class uh, normalized by R200. Uh, and yeah, from two to three, you have the, the red line, and um, three to four, uh, and going, going outside the, the cluster. If we look at the Mach number, we're going to see that uh, the Mach number is very, very low at the, at the filament. So this indicates that there are no shocks uh, inside the filaments. And there's this big cloud of uh, of particles with high mass, uh, high Mach number, uh, and the arrows indicate what is the flow of the of the particles. So uh, this is the velocity field, but if you remove the info component to see clearly what, uh, what the info to the filament is, uh, here again you have uh, all, the, all the particles and only the uh, shocked particles on the right. Uh, yeah, so close to the center, you see the Mach number is low, and close to the filament, uh, it, it is also very low. And um, we have like a bump in the Mach number as well at a certain distance from the filament. And um, yeah, this this cloud of very high Mach number uh, in this position. Uh, if we look at the temperature, and uh, we see that Obviously, close to the filaments, the temperature is higher, and even higher if you approach the center of the cluster. But we see also a bump at a certain distance from the filament. Uh, it is important to note that this bump doesn't coincide with the position of the Mach number bump, so it is a bit closer. Um, and we also see that close to the filament, uh, there is a, like a dent in the, in the profile. Uh, so basically, the gas that is uh, inside the filament is cooler than this gas. And if we consider only only the shock particles, 
we see uh, a bump that it is much weaker than in this plot. Um, yeah, and another thing that we can see is uh, the particles that are exiting the cluster. So these are the percentage or the fraction of the particles that are leaving the, the, uh, the, leaving the cluster. So here you see like a cloud of particles that have positive uh, velocities, around the 40% of the particles uh, are like this, but not on the filament. Uh, and the same thing happens but, uh, with a lower percentage, like 20% of the particles that are shocked uh, are leaving the, the, the cluster. So basically this, uh, I think it has to do with the fact that this cloud of particles is encountering other material in falling from these uh, areas and producing a shock um, at the border of these uh, areas. So basically, I think that is an explanation why you see this uh, this Mach number cloud. Um, but we are unsure of this. Um, so yeah, the discussion we have is that um, in this diagram, we have the center of the cluster, R200. Uh, the material is flowing very efficiently through the filament. And there is this cloud of particles that are escaping the, the cluster center. This is going to find other uh, material that is informing towards the, the cluster. So there's going to be a shock here. And at the same time, the, uh, there are particles that are uh, informing towards the filament at the same time. And uh, they also okay. produce uh, some shocks here. Uh, okay. Yeah. We have one minute. Okay. Um, one thing that we, we are not very sure is that uh, if this cloud was already there and the filament is now piercing through, through it, uh, and injecting the, 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 the gas, or if uh, there is a flow, uh, like a turbulent flow of, of the gas, and the gas coming from the filament uh, deviates, um, produces this cloud. So if ever, any, anyone knows about this, uh, please um, tell me. So these are the conclusions on the future work. So yeah, the Mach number in the filaments is really low. Is like a cloud of uh, particles with high Mach number at a certain distance from the cluster. There's a shell around the filaments. These exiting particles, uh, the bump in the temperature profile, and uh, yeah, this this shock could have an impact on uh, on the evolution of the galaxies. We also studied the dependence with the relaxation parameter and the cluster mass, and um, yeah, and we plan to uh, know more about this cloud of particles that are coming uh, from the from the cluster so that's it uh, thank you thank you so we have time for questions Are there questions in the room yes really interesting work um, maybe I miss it, I miss it but uh, can you repeat the mass of the clusters? Um, uh, the, the mass of the clusters, uh, I think they are very massive clusters. They are like the, the top uh, 324 um, mo most massive clusters from the, the multi-dark simulation. So I think the, the masses are around 10 to the 14. 15, okay, uh, 14, 13, very massive. Okay, so very massive ones. Yeah. Um, have you tried with uh, another mass range? Uh, no, no, but uh, that, is, uh, that is one of the things that we can uh, do uh, to separate it uh, in different bins of uh, mass because we have 324, so we can separate it in like three beans and study the the highest masses and the lowest masses. Uh, yeah, that is one of the things that we are uh, we we are studying. We we, we couldn't find anything uh, for the moment, but uh, yeah, it is interesting to to try that. And, and another question was uh, if you can you study the um, the population of the clusters within this uh, with the, the stacked filaments. Compared yeah. with the clusters without filaments. These are only the, the gas particles. 
Okay. We're not studying the galaxies or. Okay. Thank you. So we have time for our last question. <coughs> Agustin, hi. Uh, sorry if you said, kind of missed some part of the talk. Uh, so you are uh, seeing some shocks of the gas of the cluster, which is uh, going outward. But shouldn't we see the same with uh, the gas from the filaments that isn't entering the, the cluster? Um, yeah, uh, we see that apparently um, what is happening is that the, there is this shock uh, around the clusters and, and, the, and the filament uh, seems to be pier piercing through the this this shell of uh, gas but we yeah but the, but there are no shocks like there are some sh shocks inside the filaments but the mass numbers uh, are really low and yeah t they tend to be outside the filaments uh, but apparently it doesn't encounter other material that is leaving the cluster so it, it doesn't shock thanks the speaker again <laughs> <laughs>